I'm a computing engineer at CERN and I work for the OpenStack Magnum project. Um, the OpenStack Magnum project is the container orchestration as a service and we use it for the container service at CERN which provides a container infrastructure for the high energy physics community. Cool. Uh, apart from Magnum, we use a lot of OpenStack services. Um, we have a very big private cloud which is based um, on uh, CentOS and uh, the RDO packages, the community packages. And we run Nova, Keystone, of course, Glance, Neutron, uh, Manila for, for shares, Cinder for block storage, Barbican for secrets, Heat for orchestration that is used mostly by Magnum and very few users. Magnum that I mentioned. Uh, for S3, we don't have Swift, but we use the Rados gateway of Ceph. I think we use also Mistral for workflows and we start to investigate Watcher for some optimizations. I don't think we miss any, a lot of projects from, the, from OpenStack to have almost all of them. And I, I hear there's a OpenStack days coming up? Ah, yes. So thank you for the, <laughs> helping me do the plug. And on the 27th of May, we have the OpenStack days at CERN. It will be themed for scientific uh, organizations, how they use OpenStack. We will have uh, representatives from CERN, of course, from the Square Kilometer Array um, project in the UK. But it's an international project that uh, will have mostly people from Cambridge University. And some people from NASA from the early days will be there. And I think uh, two more biological or Institutes regarding biology, the Sanger Institute from the UK. A couple of more that I don't remember the names. <laughs> so it will be mostly science themed. Uh, the next day, yes, uh, I usually don't remember this because I have done it many times. But uh, what is also very attractive to visitors, and most of them ask, can I bring my kids? Can I bring my wife? Uh, the next day, uh, since the accelerator has stopped to upgrade for the next run and to go to LHC High Luminosity, uh, there will be underground visits in various parts of uh, the accelerator and the experiments. It will include the ALICE experiment, the CMS exper experiment, the tunnel, and the antimatter factor. If someone can make it uh, it's, it's, uh, in Europe, it will be very nice because we will organize the private visits. But this year, uh, it's a very good year to visit CERN because the accelerator is down for maintenance, so it's possible to visit everywhere. And at the end of September 22 or 20, there is the OpenStack Open Days. So similar to what we will do for the OpenStack Days, this will be for everyone, and it will be a full day of visits. So everyone can just drop by without scheduling and uh, jump in one of the visits. Do you have a date for that? I think it's 20 or 22nd of uh, September. But uh, if you Google CERN OpenStack or Bing, <laughs> CERN uh, Open Days, uh, 2019, it will be end of. <clears throat> Let's hear about CERN and OpenStack. CERN and OpenStack, yeah. So we run, as I said, the cloud with around 8,000 hypervisors, a very big control plane which runs on OpenStack. So initially we started for a, with a couple of physical machines. We would start OpenStack, and then almost all services run on Nova VMs. And we have separation between all services, which is like, I think, the best practice to have either in containers, but in a dedicated environment, each service to have different life cycles because it's much easier to upgrade. Um, as I said, everything runs uh, on CentOS and actually CERN CentOS and the RDO distribution. Um, and we get a lot of feedback, uh, a lot of help from the community. We contribute back because we are usually early adopters. And we have contributed, I think, a couple of packages. So the RPM spec for Magnum was written by us, not by me, by a colleague of mine that was in the team before me. And I think a couple of more were written by us. So we take from the community, we give back. It's in a good relationship. Uh, so more for CERN. Um, as I said, they work for the Magnum project and we run the container service at CERN. And containers are, attra are attractive for um, 
physicists and um, engineers at CERN for various use cases. Um, the biggest business of CERN is data analysis. Um, so not only in containers, but traditionally in VMs, we run uh, batch systems or other systems for um, uh, HPC, high performance computing, and we start to explore some machine learning use cases that are running traditional infrastructure. Well, VMs now are traditional. Um, but uh, recently, as um, uh, teams want to speed up their life cycle, the, their development cycles, they start to adopt containers. Uh, this is the most important reason for us. It's not the, the big difference. VMs might have better resolution, containers have good isolation too. But the change of how teams work with containers, uh, I think it's better. Um, so we try early adopters of containers started to be IoT services like CI CD. We have a GitLab instance at CERN that the GitLab team manages and they use uh, Docker Swarm through Magnum to uh, create all the runners for jobs that the uh, users submit. And other use cases were um, interactive data analysis. So Project Jupyter is a very popular project with, I think, everyone and runs very well on top of Kubernetes or just containers. And um, there, is a, there are a couple of teams that have solutions based on Jupyter, and they, this ties very well with uh, the offering of Magnum, which is uh, like Kubernetes as a service, uh, uh, because most of the users use Kubernetes in our cloud. Um, other use cases include, uh, for example, the mail service, uh, the team that runs the mail. The mail service, they investigate in a new solution for our organization that will run most probably in Kubernetes, but they also evaluate other solutions. Um, Spark, uh, we have a data analytics group that leverages Spark, and they consume the Spark operator from the upstream community, and they run it on top of Magnum, but they could run it anywhere, but Magnum just gives upstream Kubernetes. Um, I said Jupyter, data analytics, <laughs> who does I forget? It's, it's one more. Ah, yes, and Batch. Batch, which is like 80% of our cloud. I uh, used to run in physical machines, but this wasn't very performant. Well, the machines had good performance, but it wasn't very easy for the team to manage it. So in 2013, that we started the cloud, we started moving in VMs, and now they want to move towards running a Batch on top of Kubernetes uh, because of all the benefits of um, lifecycle management and uh, Git-based uh, operations. Sweet. It's, it's one of the most impressive use cases. Although it's not the best paradigm for Kubernetes, but uh, yeah, because of the very big size, it's, uh, it's very important. I guess, yeah. So I actually I forgot what I'm working in, specifically only me with my team. So uh, as Kubernetes becomes more popular, and not only Kubernetes, but OpenStack as well, because even if uh, most, like 50% or 60% of our users have a master's degree, 30% have a PhD, even for those people uh, sometimes don't want to adopt uh, new containers easily, uh, technologies easily, so even VMs were an issue for them. But usually they want to adopt OpenStack, and if not VMs, they go to containers. So we have two new projects uh, that involve uh, experiments, but not for data analysis, but running control systems. So some systems that run that control the accelerator might start using OpenStack and Kubernetes on top. And the trigger farms uh, are investigating solutions for running uh, the systems for the trigger that are very close to the accelerator and containers. Cool. Great. Uh, so for the upstream project, I started, my team started uh, looking into Magnum in 2015. I hadn't joined the team by then, then I joined in 2016, and I started to contribute uh, with them in upstream. Then Magnum was extremely popular, more than now, um, but this was mostly for development. Now it's popular with users. Back then it was popular for open, with OpenStack developers. And uh, I became core uh, after a year or a few months. And uh, I was the PDL for four years, and now we have rotated, and Feilong from Catalyst Cloud is now the PDL. Uh, other organizations that contribute is Blizzard Entertainment, and uh, Stack HPC from the UK that are involved with uh, the SK experiment and other solutions in, uh, in most of the UK. I think they have also users in the US. 
another user that contributes uh, mostly on feedback because they're on Magnum. They haven't uh, got the, got themselves around using uh, uh, contributing to the project, but uh, they provide valuable input. Is City Network that provides public clouds, and I think one more. I forgot the name. Uh, yes, uh, I think also the BBC. They start to investigate on Magnum and they send a couple of patches. Uh, I don't know what is the status exactly, but they found some bugs. They fixed them themselves. I reviewed them. It was very nice. And so this is from the side from the community. And uh, for feature. Maybe I can explain a bit what Magnum is, because not everyone may, may know. Yeah. It's a very small uh, service of OpenStack REST, REST API service, which is on purpose very small. Because what we want to give the users is the vanilla projects from upstream, like Docker, uh, Docker Swarm, and uh, vanilla as they would install in any cloud or in their laptops or in their uh, on-prem machines or Kubernetes or DCS. But clearly, the winner for user adoption is Kubernetes. Um, so what Magnum does is provides with one click, uh, with one API call or one click in Horizon, a Kubernetes cluster, which is conformant. And this is very useful for users that want to start understanding what Kubernetes is without having to know how to configure it, because it has a vast majority a vast um, amount of options which can be overwhelming and not very useful in the beginning. So uh, half, our, half of our uh, clusters are very small for users that iterate very fast they, or they create clusters for their CICD, they run something and then they destroy the cluster, or they have a, a couple of clusters running for a couple of weeks to develop a solution. Is it more for a proof of concept or is it for in production just simplified? So it's both. Half of the use cases are for proof of concepts and development, and because it's very easy to create a cluster and then uh, give, uh, give the resources back. And then there are use cases that run uh, long-running services, like production services. Uh, one very important that I forgot to mention before at CERN, for example, is to run some web logic applications, uh, which uh, involves a lot of uh, HR workflows and uh, that I'm not know, but it's like very close to administration of the organization, so it's not something that... Even that analysis might be production, but if all the computes uh, shut off, it's not an issue because uh, what, uh, what is written in disk, we can, still, we can still compute it again. But for administration services, they must be up and running. Um, so, and this is also the pattern for other clouds. Uh, not for public clouds, because for them, from their point of view, they just want to sell, they don't necessarily care what their users are running. Uh, but for private clouds, it's more or less the same. Some production clusters and some for development and proof of concepts and canard deployments. Even, even users, because it's so easy to create a cluster, they use canard deployments in different clusters. Well, while in Kubernetes, the advertised way is to have some nodes or some namespaces dedicated for dev or QA, and then the production namespace. It's so easy for users to ju just point from one cluster to the other, and uh, um, they may follow that pattern. So what Magnum provides is CRUD operations for clusters. Create, delete, scale, and recently we added healing, uh, auto-scaling, which was a big, uh, very fun contribution from our team, and uh, Thomas uh, did it. With all the other community members that I mentioned, we all reviewed together. Now it's, it lives in the upstream Kubernetes of the scalar repo, which is its own provider directory, and so uh, it has its own life cycle, but it just lives in, in the repo that maintained um, mostly by Google developers. Um, what we are plan, what we plan also to release either in May or early June with an RC, and possibly backport of some of the functionality in Stein is for cluster upgrades, uh, which is a long-running, long-standing development task by me that I didn't have time because I do also other things and uh, I always say I will finish the gym, I will finish this week, <laughs> but I will now because it's so close. I, I also had a lot of help from the HIT team, which um, our solution is based on HIT, so they provide valuable uh, input and uh, I think uh, it's very close in, uh, uh, for us to release it. Um, yeah, we also added healing, so healing of clusters is added already, 
and this is based. This is this works only for Kubernetes, and it uses the autoscaler. So the autoscaler can be configured that if the autoscaler finds empty nodes, it will try to scale them down. So uh, if something is wrong with a node, um, we we'll have another component that runs inside based on node problem detector that will drain the node. So the autoscaler will see that it's empty, and it will scale it down. Um, we don't know yet how to deal with um, nodes that are marked for not not to be scaled down, but if there are bad nodes and need to be fixed, uh, we still explore this uh, corner case. And what else in Stein? Yes, in Stein, we added a lot of add-ons, uh, like Prometheus. Uh, it's not like a proof of concept. It can be used for production use cases, but if the clusters are very big, like 200 or 300 nodes that we have in some cases, the default options might not work because it's a matrix database, a time series database. So if the cluster is very big, uh, more optimizations uh, will need to be done. Um, we also added some integration with Helm to, but this is mostly for the Magnum developers, like for us, to introduce new features e easier. Can you tell us what Helm is? Helm. So Helm is the package manager of Kubernetes. So it uh, has a bunch of templated YAMLs, uh, which use the Go templates. So it's to, instead of having to put um, configuration options in many YAML files, uh, Helm abstracts this in a single values file so that it's easier to, to iterate on. And then the full chart, uh, a help package for the chart, is uh, packaged in a tarball, <laughs> and then this tarball can be distributed um, either directly to the Helm client in the local file system or in S3 in an HTTP server somewhere that the Helm client can fetch it. Um, so instead of having to put a very big manifest inside our code, we can reference something that the upstream community manages with Helm, and then and uh, do help install and pass only one file for the values that we want. And uh, th th this reduces code and, uh, and uh, benefits from the work that uh, other teams are doing that are focusing specifically on Prometheus because we're a small team, we have a lot of knowledge in this, uh, for these projects, but we cannot uh, maintain them all. What else we did? I think it was one more thing. Ah, yes, for the cluster resize and scale operation. Uh, we used to have some bugs on it, and especially for long-running clusters, that um, uh, during the lifespan of the cluster, the cloud team would do updates on the Magnum code base. Some things might break. So well, now we have fixed that, and it's also possible to delete specific nodes, so it's like a more... more it's an improved cloud operation, like an update operation. For what are you thinking might come in Stein? Besides that specific functionality that you're writing. Uh, yes, for this separate <laughs> functionality. The other one that will come slightly later, but definitely very early in, no, in train. Not in train, train, thank you. It's uh, node groups. So node groups is uh, one contribution that comes again from our team, not from me, but from my colleague Theodoros. But we, the, the whole team of, that works on Magnum at CERN contributes, also the upstream team, the upstream community gives feedback, is to have heterogeneous clusters. Um, clusters that have nodes with different flavors, and flavors in OpenStack mean different availability zones or different hardware that the Nova will schedule uh, based on the attributes of, uh, in the flavor and also a mix of physical and virtual machines. And, but the most important thing is availability zones to have an, a, an HA solution. Um, all the uh, API and uh, engine code of Magnum is uh, already merged and it's available, not in Stein, but in the first, uh, uh, but it's in master merge already. And we iterate now in the first implementation that will leverage this new API and have heterogeneous clusters. I think if we if you complete these two features that are outstanding, Magnum will be mostly feature complete. 
because the scope of the project is small and all the, all the requirements will be met and then we will have mostly maintain, keep up with the new versions of Kubernetes for bugs that we don't know yet and then I'm sure we will find and yeah, or other small optimizations. But no, I don't think we will we have identified any new features uh, yet. I'm sure something will come up, <laughs> but let's say for this year or maybe next year we, do, we will not have uh, new features apart from this new plan. Well, I I get I often get the question because I'm the RDO uh, community manager. You know, is Triple O going to replace Packstack? And my my typical response is no, because CERN uses Packstack for uh, testing purposes. Um, and and people never believe me. <laughs> Especially for compute nodes, we will still need uh, the RDO packages. So we have convinced the Nova team to not remove features because we use them. I think we can uh, convince the RDO community uh, to do the same. So um, we, we consume too, too many packages of that to go away. And it's not only us. I think, uh, I think City Network use, uses the same, or it used to use the same. So but, um, contributions to RDO, I think, they come from too many places. I don't think